throw it in Cambria. And next up, with Vaxis 2, a window of the waking mind. Sam, in the wide walls of the, all the things that make up prog rock. I can't imagine many things that are more primed to make you open your heart to it than something in the vein of what Cohen and Cambria do. Yeah, they're, they're, they are one of my favourite prog bands. I don't love everything they've done, but, like, if they're gonna, if I'm going to listen to a prog band, Coheed have, like, they know how to make me kind of go, oh, I like prog a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and I, I do think, um, you know, you might uh, agree here that uh, it's been a good time to be a Coheed fan in the last number of years. From, like, 2015, I'd say, like, um, yeah. Had, like, um, Colourful the Sun was, like, a kind of stripped back to basics record, but I was, like, really good. And then the first Vaxis one was them, like, doing their full-blown prog epic, 70, like, what, like, 70-something minutes long prog epic, and it was, like, really, like, cool and engaging. I mean, from, you know, again, Colour Before the Sun, right through to then collaborating with Rick Springfield to drop Jesse's Girl 2 in the middle of lockdown, which is an absolute winner of a song, and we don't deserve them doing it, like... The best time to be a Coheed fan since, like, it's good Apollo, since right? like their most classic era of the mid two thousands. Because, like, when I first became aware of Coheed and Cambria in like the early twenty tens, they were like a a well established, admired band. But ever since Colorful the Sun through to the, the present day, been on a really good run of form. Yeah. Um, and this is Vaxis two. It's the sequel record to the uh, the first part of the Vaxis whatever saga i think um, they said there's gonna be five of them it's five i thought this was just part two of two I th- oh my I, God. I, I, they, they want to do five vaxxis out we're gonna be reviewing vaxxis records for the rest of our fucking lives um okay <laughs> uh unheavenly creatures for the first one for 2018 can't imagine you're a, an amory wars law follower i mean i have no clue what i, like, I, I love that they have this huge like deep sci-fi law that goes along with it i think that's a really fun thing i ain't got a clue the what album cover about. for this is so like it's the movie poster. Yeah, but it's, it's so the crowded. I have no idea who any of these people are. You know what I mean, though? It is the, it is the generic, here is your cast of characters all on there as your movie poster. Yeah. And I'm like, cool. It's... Yeah, there, there's some sci-fi looking dudes and there's a kid who I assume is important because quite a lot of this album is talking about a kid at some point and so I'm guessing he's like, a chosen one, maybe. Yeah, um, give up by this point if you're not already. But uh, Colour Pull the Sun was sort of like a step back to more, like, you know, simple, earnest love and pop songs. Unheavenly Creatures stepped right back into it and upped the prog massively. But I do think most people seem to agree that it was continuing the strength of songwriting that we had yeah. on uh, Colour Pull the Sun in this kind of proggier zone. Like Old Flames from that album is fucking That's huge. Wicked. And it's still a song that many of us remember very fondly. I was preparing my something for um, I, something similarly strong, but also attention demanding as that record was with this being you know, the second part of that four years in the making. Amazingly, only 53 minutes long or something this time. We've lost like a third of the running time, which, uh, you know, this has, I think it's absolutely gone more efficient in songwriting than the first part was. Well, I like, like two thirds of this album is essentially um, uh bright and breezy pop songs by Coheed standards. Like, they, they 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 really kind of, like... I think that Jesse's Girl Part 2 was, like, a great taster for what the, the writing inspiration for a lot of this album was, particularly in, like, the first two-thirds of it, where it is, like, hugely 80s-inspired, and it is, like, real power-pop, like, 80s energy. Well, I mean, it's thematically tied together by uh, reminding you straight away of the melody from Old Flames, which, you know, is putting a record yeah. on that's just Old Flame reprise. I'm, I'm on side. I'm snug. Uh, but the first song right away um, after that the, um, is, you know, their ability to kind of embed such enveloping, uplifting vocal bursts into intricate songs that, you know, hey, kid, there's no shame. Yeah. Like, I'm just, you know, I'm lifted and I'm carried away and it's a joy. And that wasn't even a single. Yeah, no, that, that that that, and that's quite a like a patient sort of opener, um, but it's still got that just like really just sweet swelling lift of a chorus from Claudio. Like, like he's just got such a just a, a knack for writing killer pop melodies, and they're all over this record. Well, I think these Vaxis albums have done a, a very good job, um, in particular in kind of Cohe's ca- uh, catalogue. I think of if you put them next to kind of you know similar series albums like the Afterman albums for example they make these big sagas like incredibly pop and and work in both guises there like this is a record mm. with overtures and shit but something like comatose is like total 
pop dance pop yeah. like yeah uh, and you know like i said to be honest this one's gone a lot less long form prog than even the the first part was and i was i was taken aback by um the reliance on sort of pop formats here but just way more eccentric yeah no i i really dig how like the same kind of like dance about between like various different pop influence things but like you'll get like po- comatose which is like pure bubbly pop rock and then you get shoulders coming in straight and that riff on shoulders hits that much harder because of how like fun and bubbly comatose is and that is just like full-on like head banging like rock stuff yeah well, it's zeppelin isn't it and it's like you yeah know, the the rock swag i think that was the lead single and the kind of yeah the fatness of that guitar tone we're used to hearing that from like royal blood and stuff like that today but never with musicianship like uh like like coheeds i think but it's still really accessible as well like i mean that's, yeah. that's a great thing about sam is that is it is proggy and intricate points but it is it is immediate like like it kind of in the back end is where they decide to go all out on the, the prog maniac stuff, which I'm like, I'm cool with it by that point because you've had this like really fun pop album before it. But um, yeah, it's, it's a uh, really cool. I mean, when um, a disappearing act came in and is full on. That did blindside pop, me. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, cool. And then, <laughs> then like that blaring eighties, like neon, just garish synth. And I was like, I'm in. Yeah. I love it. I don't care. Even with the bit of auto tune vocal, like, it, it mostly kind of works. It's the synth. It feels again massive. deliberately though. Like like they they're doing the auto tune because it's kind of just tying into the synth pop thing. Like yeah, it, it just as you know breezy and kind of melodically strong as uh, the rest of it. There's always quite a lot of you know studio work going on in terms of synths and layering and stuff. And sometimes you do get full fucking three oh three vocals that you know maybe. <laughs> Not always necessary. It's very heavy on the electronic exp- uh, experimentation, which doesn't all gel. But they're hardly being, you know, tentative with it. No, but it's not also. It's not too egregious. Where like it's it's moments on songs. It's not like the entire thing is just like auto tune nightmare. Yeah, certainly they are in a in a supporting role. And you know, a uh, bad man, which other than sounding <laughs> other than sounding like it should be a Skindred song from the title, but like. It was more modern day chart radio type song that I was kind of ready for. Yeah, like th- th- there's a, a lot of modern pop influence. In this. Yeah. Like I think it's that. Like there's loads of like '80s influence, but like there is definitely like with some of the production things and some of the beats and like stuff like that. Like they they, they de- like clothes definitely like listen to a lot of what's going on with modern pop and brought that into the sound as well. Yeah, that might not work for everyone, but um, you know credit to him for kind of you know trying to keep on board with these things and it does as you say it, it waits to get full prog really until like, the last little suite of the album i did i laughed at how dramatic the shift is into again you've been doing fucking you know kohi goes despacito or whatever the fuck and then the evil overlord guitars of ladders of supremacy come I mean, in that's it, is you get our love is like this like it's kind of like an ending to the first yeah, chunk of the record. Yeah, but it's like, again, it's a like, minute of, like, uh, vocal uh, synthesizing and stuff like that, and then suddenly it's like the fucking Darth Vader walks. <laughs> yeah, it, and then it's like, uh, and then and that, that <laughs> I was like, cool, so now we've got, like, a six-minute song, a five-minute song, and an eight-minute song. Like, we're going full prog now, and this is where they go, oh, we should probably tell this story that we've got going on, and, like, there's an evil warlord, I guess, and it's mental, but, like proper epic end to the record yeah window of the waking mind goes like full queen metal show tune like it's pretty mental but you still yeah. again the the lifts in stuff like uh rise naya Nisha, like just consistently whether you are i guess into the the different tones they are going for across the record that is what is kind of the consistent through line of it and makes it you know, an, another enjoyable listen from coheed yeah i think that's always been one of the things that has just made them like made me gravitate towards them is that i always know even if they're, they're like with some of the more proggy moments, that there's always going to be this massive, sweet, like emo vocal chorus, like, and it's going to just hit that spot for me. And and they're all over this record again, and it's just a really fun listen. Yeah, I, I think if you liked Unheavenly Creatures, you will have similarly fun with with this one. I think if you lean more towards Color Before the Sun style coheed than you know prog. You might enjoy this more than the fir- the first part of of, of Vaxis too, because the emphasis is more on kind of poppier Pop direct song, right? songs. Yeah. yeah, and and I think that's why I, I like I, I've listened to Vaxis one in full for a good while because it, th- th- that's a seventy minute album. Yeah. Like, if there's one code album that I'm going to go for the final taking, it's Good Apollo One because I think the album is just excellent. Yeah. But, um, like yeah, like 
this being like just a bit more compact, a bit more manageable, I really like it. Yeah, well, I mean, you have just dropped the news on me that we're expecting Vaxis records for like, the next fifteen I, years. Like, I don't know. So, I, I, I think um, I was reading that one like the press things that they they they, <laughs> they, they, they have this planned as a five. It, it doesn't surprise me knowing what again how Coheed have managed their career up to this point. But like, I guess you know we'll see how uh, you know the kind of Coheed renaissance that we've had, like how long it will sort of uh, go. But I certainly think that um, yeah, still still into what Coheed are doing currently. Yeah, same. Awesome. Vaxis 2, A Window of the Waking Mind from Coheed and Cambria. Let us know if you are as into that as uh, Coheed Cambria Records of late.